everyone, it's Jenna. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna do another DIY aged vessel video. You guys really liked my last one, so I figured it was time to come up with some new aged vessel ideas. And it's no secret that these can really add character and warmth to your space. There's something I constantly see designers using in their spaces, but they can come with a pretty hefty price tag. You know, I'm talking hundreds of dollars. So while they are really beautiful and authentic looking, I just personally don't have the budget for that. So I came up with some really fun ways to do your own DIYs with things you find at thrift stores or just cheap vases that you can find at the store. And I honestly don't think that you're going to be able to tell the difference between the aged vessels and the ones we're going to make today. So it's going to be a really fun video and I'm excited to share it with you guys. So without further ado, let's get into the DIYs. Okay, so for this first vase, I actually picked up this really cute pot at the thrift store for $8. Now, I know some of you are going to think it is a crime to cover up this sweet little design, and I'm not going to lie, I had a hard time with it, but at the end of the day, it just didn't go with my decor, and what originally drew me to this piece was the winged detail. I think that looks really expensive, and this really closely resembles the French cone fee pots, which was my original inspiration for this DIY. And I really just wanted to keep the color close to the original tan color of the pot, so I picked up this spray paint in matte river rock and gave it a light coat of that. And once that had all dried, I just took it inside and used this Waverly chalk paint in the shade Truffle for our accent dirt color. And this is just really gonna help age the pot and look like it's been naturally worn over time. And I feel like the trick here is to just do really light and subtle applications as opposed to dabbing the whole thing with a paint soap sponge. So I would heavily concentrate the paint on areas where aging would naturally occur, like around the mouth of the vase, around the bottom, and on the little wings and handles. And then I would just use the leftover paint that I had from those areas and do really light dabs around the middle. So I just blended everything out a lot and I switched back and forth between using a craft sponge and a wet paper towel. And I really wanted to make sure that everything was subtle and blended, not blotchy and speckled. And I would just apply the paint and then wipe almost all of it off, leaving just a little bit of paint to emulate a really light layer of dirt. And it just takes some patience and some time, but if you slowly build up those really light layers of paint I feel like it just gives you a super realistic looking result and it's as simple as that we started out with this thrifted soup terrine and turned it into a gorgeous handled vase that really resembles a vintage French cone fee pot that can go for 90 plus dollars so I just popped this little faux asparagus bush in it that I got at Hobby Lobby and now this is a gorgeous accent piece that you can pop on a side table a console table a countertop whatever and just gives your home an expensive vintage look for a fraction of the price all right, so next up, I found this really cute dotted vase at Hobby Lobby for $15. It was originally 30, but I waited for a 50% off sale week. And the green just didn't go super well with my decor. So I decided to make the green part look a little bit more like this vintage pot that I found on Etsy for $600. I love the unique look and finish of it. So I wanted to try to emulate that for this vase. I really loved the clay slash terracotta detail on the top and bottom of the vase. So I decided to leave that there for some added dimension and just redo the green part. So I went ahead and used some painter's tape to protect it from the coat of spray paint I was about to do. And I taped up the top so no spray paint got inside of the vase. And then the edges of the tape don't have to be perfect, just something to roughly protect the top and the bottom. So then I just went in with the same matte river rock spray paint and gave the whole thing a really light spritzing to cover up most of the green. I didn't really worry about making it too thick of a coat, just something to give it more of a tan color to work off of. So then I just used some Waverly chalk paints in the shade Mineral and Truffle to give this finish more of a chalky, matte, dirty finish. And this is just gonna really help us achieve that antique, almost artifact-like look of our inspiration base. So I just used some water and put that on a plate. I used a wet paper towel to kind of start dabbing, but I did start with a wet paper towel, but I found that the craft sponge actually worked much better for this, so I eventually switched to that. And by mixing water with these chalk paints what we are essentially doing is creating a faux mud so we're gradually building up this layer of paint that looks like caked on dirt so the 
pot is going to appear like it's been sitting out in the elements for years. And my strategy with this was just to use more of the lighter mineral shade and get it into all of the cracks and crevices of the vase and then go in with the more darker truffle color and dab the tops of the dots to create more depth and dimension and just really accentuate the unique texture of this vase. And that is it. That is how we took this affordable store-bought vase and turned it into a gorgeous faux antique pot that has a really similar finish and texture to this $600 true antique piece. So I just took two of these stems that I bought off of a floral and I popped them in here and I love all of the character that this vase has. It is some really fun and unique details while still being an overall neutral piece so it can easily bounce around different rooms of my home. And this vase would honestly be gorgeous if you just displayed it by itself with greens in it, or I even experimented with some pretty dried florals and I loved the look of that too. So a super versatile, unique vase that was a really simple DIY and can help elevate the look of any space. All right, so our next DIY is going to be this large planter that I found at Lowe's and they had two sizes to choose from and I chose the smaller one. It was a bit cheaper and I didn't need anything that big, but they do have that option if you need it. And I really wanted to make this look like those large black clay pots that I see so many designers using right now. This is footage from a recent trip that I took to an antique mall and I found these gorgeous ones for $250 each, but I knew I could make one look really similar for a lot cheaper. So. I was originally drawn to this pot because of its overall shape and size, but you can honestly do this technique to any vase that you want, whether it be thrifted, store-bought, large, small, whatever. So I just started giving my pot a nice coat of matte black spray paint, and you guys, this is such an easy DIY. It literally has two steps and you're done. So after the spray paint had dried, you guys can see that even though it was matte, it still has a light sheen to it. So to eliminate that and give it a dirty clay-like look, all I did was take some chalk that I found at Walmart and all I could find before filming this video was white, but I think that a light tan or gray chalk would look really good also. And I have since bought some at Michael's, so I'm gonna try it on other vases. But I just made some chalk dust on some sandpaper that I had laying around, and I took a glove and just simply wiped it on. And as you guys can see, by doing this, it instantly gives this vase a clay-like antique look that really takes away that sheen and closely resembles our inspiration pot. And I will say the only downside to this is that I wouldn't recommend this technique for a vase that you're going to be touching a lot. It's really more for a decorative look, something just to be placed on a shelf or a base of a tree that's kind of out of the way, something that you don't need to touch or move on a daily basis. And I will say that touching it doesn't ruin the look of it, but if you're doing that a lot, then you would just having to maybe be rechalking it every so often and that could get annoying. But I also wanted to avoid sealing it because I feel like if you use a matte sealer spray, they always kind of have a little bit of a sheen to them and that would have ruined it in my opinion since we're going for you know a really dusty chalky clay like look with absolutely no traces of sheen so I'm really happy with how this came out and I'm just using mine for decorative purposes I just want you guys to understand that that's kind of more so what this technique is for and it's not to be used for you know anything that needs to be really durable or anything like that and it's honestly that simple. It's how we took this affordable planter from Lowe's and transformed it to look like an old clay pot that's decades old with an insanely cheap and easy two-step DIY process. I added some olive branches that I found at Hobby Lobby to show you all how pretty it could look to use as a large accent vase on a coffee table, a kitchen island, or a console table. But what I think I'm gonna use mine for is to use it as the pot for one of my olive trees. I just love the simplistic rustic look that this vase adds to my decor. Okay, so next up, we're gonna give this red pot a makeover. I found this guy at Home Goods on clearance for $9, and it was in the kitchen section, but when I'm looking for items to use as DIYs, I try to keep an open mind and just look at the overall shape and detail of the pot, not so much what it was used for, and I really liked this one because it had those wing details that I love so much. So I just went in with this smoky beige spray paint and gave the whole pot, including the inside, a nice solid coat of it. Next. I just went in with our trusty truffle Waverly chalk paint and did the same technique that I did to our first winged pot. And again, I'm just concentrating on those areas around the rim, the wings, and the bottom just to make it look really authentic and making sure not to make it too blotchy or concentrated, just a really thin blended layer of paint and water to create some texture and dimension. Now, this is the fun part. I took this Krylon triple thick clear glaze and this is one of my favorite products. It can really give anything a faux ceramic look and I 
just sprayed two coats of this all over, including the inside, just to make sure everything was nice and shiny. And that's how we took this cheap clearance pot from Home Goods and turned it into a gorgeous faux ceramic winged pot. If you like more color, you could totally do this with a pretty blue or a green shade as well. I'm just a big neutral girl, but there are really so many options with this and you could totally customize it using whatever vase you have and to whatever color you want. So I just popped some really pretty spring florals that I had laying around in here and I love how this one turned out. Perfect for a simple spring centerpiece that instantly brightens and elevates a room. Okay, so next I found this little winged utensil crock for $4 at Marshalls. And definitely don't sleep on the clearance sections when you're looking for vase DIYs. I love to find pieces that have something unique about them, like an interesting shape, texture, or detail, like in this case, the little winged handles. I didn't, however, love the words on here. So I just went in with some plastic wood and filled in the spaces of all the letters. I made sure to really put a lot on here and really get in the cracks so that it wouldn't show when I sanded the the rest off. So after that had all dried, I just went in with a little sanding block and smoothed down all the edges just to make everything really flush and even. So next I went in with these terracotta paints in shade Cool Concrete and Terrazzo Tan. And I will say I used majority Cool Concrete and just mixed in a really tiny bit of Terrazzo Tan for some warmth. And then I just went in and painted the whole crock by hand. I did decide to do everything horizontally, just have all my brush strokes that way so that it was really even and there weren't any clumps or anything like that. So once that was all done, then I just went in with our trusty truffle and a wet sponge and just kind of had fun with it. For the most part, I tried to keep most of my paint wash application in a horizontal direction, but here and there I would just rub off sections and reapply paint in a different way to keep it from looking too stripey. And I would just apply the paint with the sponge in a line and then go in and blend out the stripes with a wet paper towel, just so it looked a little bit more natural and clay-like. And I just kept repeating that process until the vase had a look that I was happy with. And that's how we took this $4 utensil crock and gave it a new look and a new life. I love the earthy organic look that this vase gives off with the terracotta paints and the faux dirt wash that we did. And I just added some greens to it and I absolutely love how it looks in our guest bathroom. All right, everyone, so that about wraps up this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Definitely leave me a comment below which DIY vessel video you like better if you've seen both. If you haven't seen the other one, I will link it down below so you can check that one out as well. And I wanna thank you all so much for your kind support and positivity. It really does just mean so much to me. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.